Thank you. And welcome yeah. back mm -hmm. to Jeff Koenige, live at the Villa Rosa Kempinski. It may be drizzling out here, folks, but I tell you, when the best political tag team on TV shows up, nothing can keep them from saying what they need to say as they speak and talk without fear or favor. Dr. Pierre Lolomumba and Barack Baluka looking like two terrible twins tonight. <laughs> same tailor, same shop, same Nehru outfits, not South Korea. <laughs> Gentlemen, tweets coming in very thick, very fast. Frederick Curie says, showers of blessings is what we need for our motherland, Kenya. Yes. DM Gatuna says, thanks for the conversations with Dr. PLO and Barack M. Contemplating Kenya as a failed state is irresponsible. Mm. Good point. Kapiti Sam says, enjoying every bit of the show. If only we can listen to the wisdom being poured by the two gentlemen. And then Kuge IG, you say, I remember PLO sermon at UON. This guy has the word. The last time I checked my Bible. And then General Kevin Tubay says, why Guru's dreams are valid. Yes, every, all, all dreams are valid. We were told uh, that. Beat, and, huh? uh, yes, and it doesn't matter what you are dreaming, where you are dreaming, yeah. who you are dreaming with. Yeah. They are all valid. Right. Gentlemen, let's get a little serious here because I think two or three weeks ago, a place called El Ade in Somalia, there was a raid, a, a horrific attack on our troops. We don't know how many died. It could be anywhere from dozens to hundreds. We still haven't been told the number. And three weeks later, PLO, people have moved on. People have discounted it and moved on. What is wrong with us? You know, this, this uh, Jeff, uh, is a serious matter. There are men and women in uniform who went to Somalia and did a good job, were attacked in the manner that they were, young lives were lost. There is a sense in which this country owes those young men and women something mm. and my sadness is that the nation appears to have forgotten completely that the nation appears to have the memory of mosquitoes in other countries monuments would be erected for those young men and women those young men and women ought to be honored posthumously those young men and women ought to be celebrated those men and women ought to be dealt with differently and we as a country appear to have forgotten about them. But I do pray and hope that within the military ranks, things are being done that will ensure that their memories are immortalized. Yes. Yeah. Barack, should we pull out of Somalia? Is this a time to nah. pull out or rethink our strategy? I, 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 I don't think that uh, we can uh, resort uh, to a kind of uh, narcotizing uh, solutions. Uh, of that kind where we are saying let's get out of uh, Somalia. I think that is a uh, defeatist. We must ask ourselves uh, why we went there. We must ask ourselves as uh, we said uh, last time we were here whether our focus is the correct focus and we must ask ourselves uh, where we have gone wrong. When we were here we talked about uh, the charge of uh, the light uh, brigade. And right. you remember the charge of the Light Brigade yes. by Alfred Lord, Lord Tennyson. Tennyson. Yes. And uh, I'm reminded uh, that about uh, uh, 40 years after Alfred Lord Tennyson had written about uh, the charge of the Light uh, Brigade, uh, that Rudyard Kipling mm. wrote about uh, the last of the Red Brigade. Mm. And the last of the Red Brigade was basically that uh, they were forgotten. The mm. soldiers were forgotten. And many times uh, that is the tragedy that uh, not just this nation, nations across the world need to ask themselves what is the worth of the life of a soldier. That our people go out there to fight for us, to defend us, so that we sleep safely in our houses. Yeah. When tragedy like that strikes, we need to demonstrate to our soldiers that we value them. That indeed we need a monument, that we need to list all the names there that these people are dying kind of anonymously yeah. mm -hmm. and they seem to be being packed away in anonymous graves. I think this is completely wrong. We owe it to our soldiers. It may be sensitive, but it must be said because like uh, Gunther Grass says, what must be said 
must be saved. Mm. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And, and the charge of the Light Brigade, I love that line. Ours is not to question why. Ours is just to do and die. To do and die. Indeed. Oh. Indeed. Yeah. Sad. And Sad. many years later, that Rudyard Kipling is uh, going to our good friend Alfred Lord Tennyson. Yes. And he's uh, asking him, what about the ones who survived? Yes. yes. They come back and they are neglected. Nobody bothers about them. They did great things uh, for, for their country. Remember that uh, this is a true story which mm. started uh, in the Crimean, Crimean War. This yes. war was fought. Uh, in Europe, mm. to some extent, a religious uh, conflict, to some extent, a uh, battle for a war of a territorial aggrandizement. Mm. But the thing is that these soldiers, French, English, Italian, they did wonders, but they were forgotten. They were forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. Fialo, moving on, the president the other day, I think it was in Kisumu, he told the opposition, listen, man, let me do my job. That was kind of unprecedented. That was a... It was unprecedented. I think what the president was saying, that you as the opposition, you have your work cut out for you. And that you ought to be an opposition that is constructive in its criticism. He was saying, not in so many words, that your understanding of the opposition is that you oppose everything and propose nothing. Mm -hmm. And that I'm saying that when I visit different parts of this country, I'm not campaigning, I'm discharging my functions as the President of the Republic of Kenya. Right. And to that extent, I agree with President Kenyatta. Mm. Once he was pronounced as the President of the Republic of Kenya and we pay taxes to a government that he leaves, whether we accept it or not, President Uhuru Kenyatta is the President of the Republic of Kenya and he owes every Kenyan a duty to serve. He can choose to run this government from Kakamega, from Kisumu, from Sagana, from Mombasa. But that does not take away the opposition's role of critiquing the government when it is necessary, criticizing the government when it is necessary, so that the people are able to see that this is a credible opposition which is an alternative government. But remember, we also come from a country where campaigns are alive and well throughout. In fact, I dare say that Kenya has been on a campaign mode since 1992. It is briefly interrupted by elections. Yeah. But otherwise, we are always campaigning for one thing or another. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is the tragedy. So that governments are in constant mode of campaign. But let us ask ourselves, is the exercise of governance not an exercise in continuous campaigns so that you win the next election, mm. however subtle the campaign is? If the election was held today, would President Kenyatta win? I think he would. Why would President Kenyatta win? Well, President Kenyatta would win, first of all, because he's an incumbent president. President Kenyatta would win because of the ethnic configuration President Kenyatta would win. It's something that is unpalatable. The opposition may think that this is uh, once again somebody re rehashing and regurgitating the so-called tyranny of numbers, but I think he would win this election. Barack? First, you, you are hogging the showers of blessings. Yeah. Uh, so, it's is, these cheap suits here. Which, yeah. is, which is not uh, very good. Uh, <laughs> hogging the showers of blessings. Now, I, I get more than you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether President Kenyatta would win or yeah. not. And I take a different view from um, what my brother here has uh, taken yeah. on uh, the role of the opposition and vis-a-vis -vis the pronouncements that uh, the president uh, has made. The opposition has not taken away the instruments of uh, working from uh, the president. The president should also know that if he's uh, a busy working president and uh, he's in charge of uh, a busy government, then he's like a, a craftsman who is in a busy workshop. Mm. And if you're in a busy workshop, you expect sound. If it's, uh, there's no sound, if there's no resonance from the workshop, then you are not working. So if he is working, he should allow the opposition to keep on criticizing him. That we know that uh, Barack Obama of uh, the United States is uh, on the home stretch. He's getting out uh, sometime very soon. Yeah. The primaries are ongoing. That's right. We have seen Iowa, we have seen New Hampshire. Yeah. And, and surprises. And uh, there are surprises. Yes. But we also are aware that uh, the campaigns against uh, President Obama began 
seven years ago. Mm. The moment he landed in, there is nothing, not a single thing he does that the Republicans uh, have found good words for. Yeah. So President Kenyatta should carry on with his work. He should stop uh, allowing himself to be diverted and telling the opposition that let me do my work. They are not taking away his office. They are not taking away the instruments. They are not taking away the facilities. Let him work. And yes, when there are things like Eurobond, let the opposition speak about them. When there are things at uh, the NYS, let the opposition speak about them. Their role is not to press him. Yeah. The press singers are there. The cantico writers are there. The psalmists are there. And there's many of those. Then yeah. we agree. In fact, I want to reiterate what he said. Yeah. It is Winston Churchill who said, if you turn to look at every dog that barks, you'd never achieve what you desire. So there is a sense in which President Kenyatta should look at the antelope. There will be very many squirrels that will <laughs> be thrown on his path. Right. He had better step on them or ignore them. But I can't agree with you more that there is a sense in which the opposition must continue to do its work and there is a sense in which President Kenyatta must also continue to do his work and there is a sense in which we must recognize that both the opposition and the government has their duty and there is a sense in which we as Kenyans will have the opportunity to determine who served better in the election that is due in 2017. Unfortunately in Kenya, the voting will be ethnic Absolutely. and it doesn't matter the performance. <laughs> it doesn't that matter. is the unfortunate. Uh, uh, be ethnic. Absolutely. Hey, that's the other thing you said, Pielo. You said a while back, you said Kenyans never miss an opportunity. To miss an opportunity. Even when the opportunity sits on their laps and begs, behold, I'm choose here. the right thing, we are here. <laughs> they miss it. They miss it. Like the rain on our suits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but one day, yeah. we shall have our moment of Pentecost. Will we? We Pio, will. Are you optimistic? Are you, are you that sure? I'm an eternal optimist because I know, I speak to enough Kenyans to know that this country will never be allowed to go the way of other African countries. Mm. The only thing is that we are taking too long to organize. We are taking too long to galvanize the people. We are taking too long to realize that time, time is running out. We are taking too long to realize that this country can be salvaged and can be made great. But I think that after the elections in 2017, not before, the eyes will not be open. Uh, the eyes of the people, we have what I call political cataracts, mm. which must be removed. And the tragedy in Kenya also is that we have these musical chairs. Mm. Those who have been there for donkey years, <laughs> as Barack would say, that we thought we were going to the promised land and we thought we were being led by Moses. But lo and behold, it's the pharaohs who wear Moses' gobs. Mm. That is why we keep suckling in the sun in and in the Horeb desert. For 40 years, yes. we are just uh, there on the mountain. And I think uh, that uh, what we need is to begin with a, a moral rearmament. That uh, we need uh, to, if we need uh, an army, and we have been talking about an army, then the armies that we have can carry on looking after us. But we need a moral army. And these moral armies must begin by liberating the sacrosanct places that the shrines must be liberated. That we're not going to have shrines where these uh, 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 profane uh, political class come in and they are greeted with the supported shaking hands because of the dollars that they are bringing, regardless of how those dollars have been sourced. That, uh, this moral army must uh, stigmatize, it must ostracize, it must traumatize the thieves. Yeah. That when a thief comes into proximity with you, you must shift and allow him to sit there alone, ostracized. That we must be able to say with Ben Mtobwa of Tanzania to some people, Pesa Zako. Zinanuka. And in fact, I wish that all places of worship, all churches, all mosques, all temples would say from today onwards up to the year 2018, there are no fundraisers in churches. We don't want your money, you take them elsewhere so that we can have these individuals who claim to speak on behalf of God giving us the moral true north mm. so that this country may vote in the right direction and choose men and women who deserve to take this country to the next level. I PLO, look forward to that day. PLO, real quick, um, the ICC ruling this coming Friday on uh, use of recanted evidence, is that a game changer? 
Now, I can almost say that on Friday this is what the court will say. I've not seen the judgment of the ruling at all, but they'll say that uh, the recanted evidence cannot be used. But that is not the game changer. You and me know that some other evidence has been adduced, some of it in camera. <laughs> so I believe that the court will then proceed to the next level and at the opportune time will rule whether there is a case to answer. But on Friday, I think they'll say that they will not use recanted evidence and that therefore Article 68.3 will not apply retroactively. Barack, you agree? You see, I'm not a, a lawyer and my knowledge of law is very limited to the laws of uh, Hammurabi, the lawgiver. Uh, which were very short and memorable. Which were very short and memorable, as uh, <laughs> the lawyer says. I'm, I'm only an artist. <laughs> so for me, the significance of the ICC is about uh, the future. That uh, we are talking here about a country that has rubbished all the institutions. We have rubbished the IEBC, we have rubbished uh, the court, and the court has also rubbished uh, itself to some extent that we have got here individuals who are saying that this time round we will not go to the courts. They are saying that we will find another solution which we have not been told uh, what it is. Yeah. But we are also talking about uh, people who are saying that the ICC was uh, designed uh, to malign and to frustrate and to incarcerate Africans and therefore we are even saying we want to move away from the ICC, we want to withdraw and we are also encouraging other people to support that view and to join us in that uh, withdrawal and I think in all this we are casting ourselves between a rock and a very very hard place that uh, we start asking ourselves uh, what happens if we don't agree again. And what happens, what message are we getting from uh, the ICC now that uh, we say we don't believe in it. And let me make myself very clear that I don't uh, want to prejudge anybody who is uh, before the ICC that they are guilty as uh, accused. But the question is, has it helped us? Going forward, if we have another crisis like we had the last time, can we expect that international good Samaritans can come in? That when we think about things we said to Dr. Kofi Annan, we told him don't babysit us. We can do these things on our own. We told uh, Ben Mukapa to keep off. We told uh, John Rasa Kufu, Marcel, John Kufu take we told tea them, and go home. take tea and go That's home. That's right. That if these things were to recur, where would we turn yeah. this time round? Yeah, it's true. As someone was telling me the other day, uh, someone very influential told me, this was the last firewall. The ICC was the last firewall. Politicians are going to look at, if we've pulled out by whatever date, they'll say, you know, they can't touch us. They can't touch us. And the next option will be Burundi. You talk about Burundi rather frequently. And I agree with you that we are not immune, but I still hold the view that this country is not moving in that direction. But there is one thing that Barack has said that is very important. The reason why many countries survive is because of institutions. We have bastardized our own domestic institutions. We are in danger of bastardizing international institutions. We know that within the African continent there are no viable institutions that can stand in our way. We have seen, as you said, in Burundi when the African Union said they were taking 5,000 uh, peacekeepers, yeah. the Burundian government said we are going to attack you. It's a declaration and of war. For 54 African heads of states retreated. In other words, it is open for country to say, you slaughter yourselves will come up and pick the pieces. And I hope that Kenyan leaders in the political class recognize that when a country is allowed to go the wrong direction, putting it back together will take generations. We have seen it in Somalia. We have seen it in different parts of the country. We must never allow our country to move in that direction. Absolutely. You saw it with Humpty Dumpty. Oh. Couldn't put him together Absolutely. ever again, whatever that uh, goes. That nursery rhyme, I but, remember it. Yeah, I'm good at this. He went to a school in Emanuli, I doubt whether they saw <laughs> it. <laughs>
Um, He's never heard of Humpty Dumpty. Um, Manuria is the headquarters of Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> and, 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 and we know about Car Carol Lewis, uh, Alice in Wonderland. If you want to learn about uh, Humpty Dumpty. Yes. No, he was in Jericho. I, I remember. <laughs> you come to Manuria Primary School, <laughs> yeah. uh, where English is nurtured. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, closing thoughts. Barack, let me start with you. That's your camera right there. Closing thoughts. My, my, my closing thoughts go to our spiritual superiors. And I challenge them to go back to the patristic writings, to go back to the writings of uh, Clement of Rome, to go back to Tertullian, to go back to Eusebius, to go back to John Chrysostom, and ask themselves what John Chrysostom would say about the way they have led us, whether the premise does not begin with them, and whether they should not be the hotbeds of the moral rearmament that this country so badly needs, and whether they are going to bed with politicians, some of whom have stolen and looted national coffers, and whether their eager hands, which are so keen to receive stolen monies, would be acceptable in the sight of the Christ that they preach. And the rest of us, that we must join this moral army and that we must never allow our country to go down the drain. Absolutely. Good point, uh, Barack. Good point. PLO, you get the final words. Same my, my thoughts today go to Kenyans on social media. Mm. In times of crisis, my fellow countrymen and women, you are so powerful. You talk about one united Kenya. But when the crisis is away, you are divided along ethnic lines. My message to you, look not at the messenger, but at the message. Ask yourself what you can do through your tweets, if they are positive. What you can do through your Facebook. What you can do through the instrument that you have in your hands. Those of you who are living in the diaspora, why must you continue to operate as if your Kikuyuness, your Kambaness, your Luoness, your Luhianess was something that could not unite us? Why don't you see your diversity as a strength so that we can create a mosaic that will build Kenya? You are the ones who give money to our political class. Tell them this time round we are going to vote men and women of character, integrity, use social media responsibly, and you will save this country for yourselves and your children's children. God bless. After, after all, Dr. PLO, Kenyans are the most active on Twitter, they say. Indeed, you are the most yes. active on Twitter. Yeah. Use it to good effect. Use it for the sake of this country. Demonstrate your patriotism and your country and countrymen and historians will remember you fondly. Gentlemen. Pleasure having you as always. Thank you. And I apologize for the way, but for your suits, send them to Sam Chalet at, at Mombasa Road, okay? We will. Sam Chalet. Yes. Just tell him, look, look what happened. You know, our Nehru suits. Yeah, we will send them please to, to Dobby's in uh, rural area. <laughs> 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 Let me end with a tea from OG Minor Robson. He says, the forgetfulness of Kenyan people is not surprising. Wait a little while, and you won't hear Tunui Saga again. Indeed. Myopic. Myopia. It's Myopia. called the uh, selective amnesia. Ah, I mm. like that. I like to call it the warthog syndrome. Indeed. When a lion is chasing a warthog, the warthog takes off. 30 seconds later, it stops. It doesn't know why it was running. Mm. Warthog. Warthogism. Warthogism. Although people say Wathog. They know it's not Wathog. <laughs> <laughs> in in, in, uh, in Siaya, yes. in Katoma village, yes. they say Wathog. <laughs> <laughs> but you and me know yeah, that. Wa Wathog. Wathog. <laughs> yes, well, even, even the word sounds the lure. Uh, Wathog. <laughs> Gentlemen, oh, by the way, I gave you t-shirts last time, right? Yes, you did. This mm -hmm. time, I'm going to give you goodies to take home, especially after this rain. Yes. You're going to need some Nivea goodies, some lotion, some deodorant, some roll-on. Nothing personal, gentlemen. I'm just giving this to you because we have a new sponsor. And they say, what's that word? What's the expression? Kick what? Keep it cool or something. Keep our skin soft. I think that is a new commercial. Gentlemen, thank you Nivea. very much. Look at that. I, I like. You like that? 
I like too much. Turn around. Who's on the other side? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well done. Gentlemen, uh, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Asante you, Nivia. Thank you. Keep it cool. Keep kicking. What's the word? We'll keep it. Nivia cool kicks, they say. Cool, cool kicks. kicks. Cool, cool kicks. Cool kicks. Cool kicks. Yeah, we especially are, in the rain. We are cool kicks. In a cool way. <laughs> we stand kicked. <laughs> Speaking of kicking, gentlemen, <laughs> tomorrow night, especially after the FKF elections, tomorrow night, we've got the legend himself, Joe Kadenge on the bench. Nampira. Kadenge Nampira, Kadenge Nampira. Mm -hmm. And he'll be joined by a man you all knew as Kenya One. Mohamed Abbas. Mahmoud Abbas. Mahmoud Abbas. Yes. Kenya One. Kenya One. Gonna have those two Kenyan legends on the bench and also the man who wrote Kadenge's book. John, John, John Nene. John Nene. John Nene. Yes. It's going to be a great show. That mm. will be a great show. Smoky. When football was football, the Gossage Cup. It's, 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 it's going to be football again. Especially will it be after, football again? Especially after today. Uh, who, John uh, Mwendwa? Mwendwa? Yes. Yes. Nick Mwendwa. Uh, Nick Mwendwa, yes. yes. He's going to do wonders. You I, think so? I, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he <laughs> asked him to say that here, yeah, and we agree with him on okay. the way. Yes. All right, we pray watch for this him. space. Yeah. But Kadengan Ampira tomorrow night. Make sure you watch JKL tomorrow. It's going to be Inspiration Thursday. 80 years old, and the man is a true living legend, just like his book says, The Life of a Legend. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. Let's do it again sometime soon. Because you know, this is the best political tag team on TV. Bar none. Even if they keep coming, this is not recycling, okay? These are good guests. Thank you. Take it from me. Oh my! Oh my. <laughs> tell, tell, tell that person about the sword of uh, Damocles. Yeah, the guy who said that yes, the real recycling. Let, yes, let him, let him come and sit here for two minutes. Will he manage? He'll say what Damocles said. <laughs> And that's homework for him. <laughs> Democles. <laughs> what hog? <laughs> Thanks. Critics live in the twilight between victory and defeat. Winston Churchill. And no. they don't know that Roosevelt. Difference. Roosevelt. Critics live between in the twilight between victory and defeat. <laughs> Tasting none. None. And mm. appreciating none. They belong to the world of cowards. <laughs> I love it. Keep tweeting. At Barack M at its PLO at Queen Anger Jeff. The hashtag politics 101. JKL hasn't gotten, will never get any better than this because we speak it. And as I keep saying, we gotta keep talking. Because the minute we stop talking is the minute we start fighting. And you know we do not want to go down that slippery slope. Thanks so much for joining us. Good night. Good luck. God bless you all. Gentlemen, thank you. Remember the suits to Chalet, eh? Chalet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 u